Welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about security and login management within the Unity web system. In plain English, that means creating and managing logins for people to access different areas of the Unity web system. To begin with, go ahead and log in to Unity web and navigate to the entity you want to work with. Uh, now, you can manage security at either a district level or a charge level. Notice I didn't say church level. That's because churches are always managed, as far as security is concerned, as part of their parent charge, even in cir circumstances where there's a single church. So let's go ahead and click the charge. And the appropriate link is called charge security. So let's click that. That brings up the charge security menu. On the screen, you're going to see a table, similar to other tables within the system, listing each person who has access and a brief summary of what access they have at both to the charge and to the church. Now notice that I'm logged in as a pastor, but I'm not on the list. That's because pastors are always administrators of a charge to which they're appointed. Similarly, district superintendents are always administered administrators of a district to which they are appointed. However, it's important that the pastor doesn't do everything within the Unity web system. It's important for the, the lay leadership of the church to take an active role in making sure the data is correct. And so security here helps delegate those tasks accordingly. The proper way to kind of introduce this is to start from scratch. Let's say we have a brand new lay leader and we want to give them access to the system. Now we've already put them in as a lay leader under charge leadership, of course, but now we need to go ahead and add them a user account so that they can access parts of the Unity web system. So we'll click add new user and select them. Now, if they're already an office holder, they'll be in this list, but for argument's sake, I'm just going to create a brand new person. The credentials area is where we need to pick out a username and password. A couple of requirements here. The username needs to be at least six digits, and the password needs to be at least six digits. And of course, as in most sites, the password and the confirm password screen must match. So I'm going to try to pick a username for Mr. Slidell here. I'm going to hope that that username is not taken. If when I submit the record it is taken, the system will bring, bring right back and tell me it's taken and make me pick a different one. Now, I need to specify a password for Bob. However, he'll have the opportunity once he logs in for the first time to change the password using the change password function we've discussed in earlier videos. It's helpful if you're adding a person to put in um, relevant contact information, especially email. Now, let's talk about security. So I have one entry for the charge and then one entry for each church. And I need to decide what access I want to give them. The default, of course, is no access. And the opposite of that is full access with view only and mixed in the middle. View only means that they'll have access to all areas, but only be able to view, never add or edit. Mixed allows you to pick individual access by area, and it's the most common functionality used. Full access, as implied, gives you access to everything, and that's equivalent to assistant administrator uh, in the old EBC system. So, 
seeing as how we've talked about our example as a lay leader, I'm going to give this person full access to both churches. And on the charge level, I'm going to pick, let them be able to add note at leadership dates. I'm not going to give them charge conference dates, but I'm going to let them view everything under charge conference, all the reporting view the compensation report, continuing education, so on and so forth. Once I've set all these functions accordingly, I'll hit Submit. And Mr. Slidell will show up here. Now, and you can see, because I picked a mixed access, this is quite a quite a chunk of text, but it gets the point across that there's, there's some access available here. If you wish, to edit an existing user, click the Edit button. Notice that this person already has a Unity Web account, so you cannot change anything on their contact information. They'll need to do that themselves. But you do have the option to edit or delete user security. Since Edit is selected, the current access for this person is shown. You can see they have very simple access. They have full access to one church. Optionally, we can delete their security. Notice that this doesn't delete their Unity Web account. They'll still be able to log in to their account. However, it will delete any access to ha they have to churches. So when they log in, they won't be able to access uh, any of their, their, their church security. I'll go ahead and do that now. You can see he disappears from the list because he no longer has access to anything within the, the church. District security works identically. The only difference is that you work at both a, you, you specify security for the district, charges, and churches. This concludes this video. Thanks so much and have a lovely day.